Hello and welcome. I hope you're having a great day today. Um, today I'm going to do some tiles that I'm going to plan to turn into coasters. As my base coat I'm going to use um, black and because I'm going to use black on white tiles I do go ahead and paint the edges ahead of time uh, just to make sure that I get it covered well enough. That way I don't end up with white spots afterwards. I'm going to just start by pouring a layer of base coat on each one. I'll spread that around a bit. Usually when I do coasters, um, I either seal, <coughs> excuse me, I either seal with um, resin or um, sometimes a, a spray paint will work well also. I'll torch out a few of the bubbles before I start. just spread this around so that it covers it as evenly as I can get it. Hopefully these will turn out really nice. Once in a while I end up with something that I am really not pleased with. Um, and I either scrap it or paint over it later. And that's okay. It's just all part of it. But a lot of times I end up with stuff that I really like an awful lot. And that's always fun. It's a lot more fun having it work out than not. And I'm going to go over it with the torch one more time. When I'm trying to do a set, um, I do like to try to do all of them at once if I am able to, simply because um, that way I know that the paints are going to be mixed the same. I'm not going to have to worry about matching colors if I made some custom paints. So I'm going to start with just a little bit of titanium white through the middle. I'm going to do another swipe on this one. And I don't want to use a ton of white, but it does add a lot of contrast. And it, um, with the black, I really think that it gives it a lot of dimension. It seems to make it look like um, there's depth to the painting. And that's part of the reason why I love these swipes. So I will start with, I'm just going to do a little bit of antique gold. I'm not going to use a ton of it. And I just kind of put it wherever, wherever I feel like I want to put it. These are leftover paints from yesterday's pour. I use these little medicine cups and uh, if I put a little bit of painter's tape over the top 
and I've only got a little bit of paint left, I put the painter's tape over the top and I can store it and it doesn't dry out on me and it saves it pretty well. So now I'm gonna go through with, um, I believe this is an aged bronze. Then I'm going to come through with the Aqua Flash Color Shift paint. I use this one a lot, both often, and I use it as a strong point in my paintings frequently, where that's the main color. scrape up the rest of this. This was a leftover as well. And I'll go over it with the torch one more time. got quite a bit of color on these typically like in a on a canvas painting I don't use this much color I like to use more negative space but on the coasters I do like to have more of the more of the colored paint on them so I'm just gonna drag it through like you would for a ghost swipe And I'm going to drag quite a bit of it off and I'm going to come back without wiping on occasion to get layers. I don't know if you can see it down here, but we're already getting some interesting cell formation going on there. And I'm gonna bring this down through to break that up a little bit. Same thing up here with this one, just to pull it through. We're really getting some amazing cells. Hopefully this focuses and you can see it okay. But I'm really impressed with the way this is turning out. And then I'm just gonna go back and do the same thing to all of them. And I try to give it a little bit of variation here and there so it's not just the stripes. Ooh, I really like how these are turning out. You can see cells popping up here and here and here. And again on this one, I did not use any silicone 
silicone oil uh, for cells. I'm just letting the cells form naturally. Sometimes it works well and sometimes it doesn't. Okay, and I'm gonna break this up a little bit, pull the white down through. back up through here and pull this down in through here. And I'm going to re-swipe over this one. go back and add more paint if you're not liking where it's going or how it's turning out. Hoping you can see this corner over here where those cells have formed. I hope I'm in the view of the camera. I can't tell from this angle. Go back and do it with these two as well. The other thing is if you start at different, put that more in the area where you can see, if you start at different, um, if we had straight lines of color with this one, it doesn't matter quite as much because I looped it so much. Um, but if you start off in different, like say this is your straight line here, you do one here, and then if you had a straight line or straight lines of color, you could come up here and pick up that more copper color and pull it through. So you can somewhat intentionally determine what colors you're going to choose to pull through. I'm going to go in the white and the blue there, and I'm going to pull that down. And then I'll come up just under the coppery color and go down this way. I almost dripped on the next one over. I've got them a little too close. You can stretch out your cells a little bit if you desire to. I have to be careful when I stretch these out not to dump the paint on the next tile over. You can see how that paint is just very fluid. Overall, I'm 
pretty pleased with what I've got going on with these. And then as the paint sits longer, you can see that there will be more cell formation. At least I hope that I'm in your view and you can see that. And this is how I like to do my coasters when I do these tiles. You can also use them to hang on a wall. I do go back and try to get some of the drips that doesn't look extremely attractive on a finished one. So I try to wipe off some of those if I can. We'll come back after a while and see how they're turning out and see how they've changed. Okay, I've given the tiles about 15 minutes or so from the last one to just sit and change. And you can see how many more cells have really popped out. You can see how that um, color changing paint, well, all of them really with the white, look like they have depth and dimension to them. It almost looks 3D. Again, there was no silicone used in this mixture. Um, I just used the Elmer's Blue All with water as my pouring medium and then mix that with my paints. I really like the way these have turned out. I think that they have a lot of character. They just look, um, I think they'll be stunning when they're done. They formed some nice cells and they've got some really interesting patterns to them. It always amazes me how I can do each one exactly the same and end up with such different um, just different patterns in them where the paint does what it wants to do. So we'll come back and see what they look like when they're dry. Okay, I'm back and the paint has dried overnight and I thought I'd just give you a little bit of an idea of how it changed as the paint dried. focus in on some of those cells and see if you can get an idea of what it looks like. Those metallics turned out really nice on this one. Now when I put an epoxy resin coating on it, it will come to life even more. I'll show you an example of that with one that I did previously. This one has epoxy resin on it, and you can see how it really brings everything to life. It shows a lot more depth, at least I hope the camera can show that. And it just makes a glass-like finish to the finished product. got no resin and resin. I hope you enjoyed the video today. If you have any questions, as always, just hit me up in the comments and I'll get back to you. If you'd like to see more, be sure to hit like and subscribe.